All right, so here we have a customer who says that their computer will work on the charger, but not on the battery. Now we've ruled out a few things that could be causing this here. The first is PP bus not being its proper voltage. But PP bus here is a nice, was a nice 8.5 when you unplug the battery. So that's not it. The customer does have a battery that has a strange brand on it. The customer battery says Ego Way on it. I don't know what an Ego Way is. So, now it's taken 600 milliamps. 600 milliamps. What happened to your microphone? I have a microphone. That's... Uh, when, so there's no, uh, you, you, there, there are no VST plugins you can use in OBS on Linux. So if, one of the things that's about Linux is the only way to use audio plugins while you're streaming is to use something called Jack Audio. And if you're not Linus Torvalds, you will never get Jack Audio to work. So we're not, I'm not, I'm not even fucking with that. Like the recorded ones can have better audio, but screw the streams having good audio. Getting Jack Audio to work is pretty much, you know, that would be probably three days of sitting here and cursing at my computer. So let's see. Now when I plug in even a good battery, it doesn't draw any more amperage. And when I unplug it, it will run off of the battery. The fan still spins. However, it won't charge that battery. So let's open it up and try to see if there's any, anything that could be causing it to not charge a battery. Because it's doing the same thing with a good battery as it is with a bad battery. Now what do you all think it could be? You all out there in comment section land. What do you think of the possibilities? It's kind of sad that I can't show you the moment. I gotta get the power supply software to work. So the two things that could be uh, going on here. Behind door number, now remember, it's, it actually acknowledges a battery, but it just doesn't charge it. So the two things that could be going on, um, really one thing, honestly, let's just see if this works in the Linux version of Paul Daniels is a great software, is this transistor, here we are, that goes between PP bus G3 hot and the battery. So over here, we have a transistor that goes between PP bus G3 hot, which is our charging voltage. See, that's what we call the PP bus. And the battery. That goes here, and this transistor is what allows it to go to the battery. And when that goes bad, sometimes it won't allow it to charge. Now the next thing that could be going on is a current sensing failure. So if either of these resistors fails or the pathway between it fails, it's not going to be able to tell how much amperage is going to the battery, so it's just going to turn it off. So it's usually one of those two things. So let's take a look in the microscope here. Hmm. Why does my microscope smell like Florida? <laughs> smells like bath salts and alligators. My microscope smells like Florida and cigarettes. <laughs> Let's see. So. Ooh, ooh. Oh, here we go. Here we go. So check it out. Check it out, people. So what I'm doing is I am measuring. This is the circuit that's going to take the 18 volts from the charger and send 8.5 volts to the battery. We're going to be turning 18 volts into eight and a half, about 8.5 volts. And the way that works is we're going to have pulses. This transistor is going to open and close, open and close, open and close, so that voltage goes through and then doesn't, and then through and then doesn't. And this chip over here is going to control when that opens. Now, what's going to happen? Every time this transistor closes, the 18 volts is going to be allowed to pass through. So you're going to have an averaging. So you're going to have this thing where you have like, oh, 18 volts, then zero. Then 18, then zero. Then 18, and then zero. And this little chip over here tries to do it, uh, calculate how to structure the pulses so that when it's done going through the inductor and the caps have smoothed it out, you get 8.5 volts instead of a bunch of 18.0, 18.0. Now, there's two current sensing circuits on here. There's this one, where you have this resistor that's going to have a different voltage over here than over here, depending on how much current is present. And then you have one over here. Now, this is a resistor between the battery and PP bus G3 hot. And this over here is a resistor between the charger 
and the area where PPBush G3 Hot will be created. So this tells us if there's too much current being drawn from the charger, and this tells us if there's too much current being drawn from the battery. Now, what I did to figure out what was going on here is I measured r right over here on this point, this right over here between these two points. And what I did was I got a measurement of open line. Now, what I should be getting here is the resistance of everything here combined. So I should be so there's a 2.2 ohm resistor here, a 0 0.01 ohm resistor here, and a 0 ohm resistor here. So in theory, I should be getting 2.21 ohms, right? 2.21 ohms. And instead, I got open line. Now, that means that either the pathway from here to here, the, the resistor is bad, the pathway from here to here is bad, resistor is bad, pathway from here to here is bad, pathway from here to here is bad, this resistor is bad, something in that circuit is bad. So rather than what I do there, the reason I made this measurement is because it's a shortcut. So what it allows me to do is it allows me to tell with just one measurement over here whether there's something wrong with the circuit rather than measuring every single resistor and every single pathway between all the resistors. So what I did was went over here, make sure my meter probes are working, of course. There we go, they are. And you do this. And now the thing that wasn't working before is working now. I also blame Linux for that. I also blame Linux for that. That is definitely something I can blame Linux for. And X server. Uh, let's see, what do we get over here? Okay, so that goes out the window as what could have been the cause of the problem. The second thing that could be causing the problem, or the third, is that the transistor is not opening. So over here, this transistor, Q7155, that goes to the battery. Now notice here that the, way, the direction of this is... It's naturally going to allow the battery to go to the system, but it's not always going to allow the system to go to the battery, unless it's told to. And that transistor is going to be over here. So I'm going to try replacing that. Paul Daniel says, you know, when you say hurtful things, it creases my soul, and even when you say sorry, those creases won't come out. This is some AU key pe I don't know how this AU key keyboard got here. I think we were looking for the cheapest mechanical keyboard. We were looking for the cheapest mechanical keyboard because Paul hates the sound of them. Here's a Polish YouTube, Daniel Rako Rasta than thing in Polish I can't pronounce that is inspired by your content. Oh, that's awesome. I hope he makes many fixes, many and with much success. Is open board view Windows 10 compatible? Paul Daniels' software works the same across all operating systems. So you can easily get the Paul Daniels experience on any operating system. Paul Daniels believes that his, the experience of his software should be equal across every OS. Jay's 2080 that he fixed is officially dead now. Well, that, that, that's what you get.
Jay fixes his GPUs the way I repair my relationships. Yeah, that's that's to be expected. Okay, I'm kind of curious how many amps this takes. Nine hundred milliamps. Come on, go to an amp. Go to an amp. You can't see this. This is so anticlimactic. This is all Paul Daniels' fault. He was supposed to make the power supply work. Just because I didn't give him remote access, never plugged the power supply in, never scheduled the time with him, and never actually got said really, really gave him any expectation of um of this. It really, is not. It's totally his fault. So I'm gonna have to go and do a do a what's what's the word here. I'm going to try to do a workaround where I have a camera pointed at the power supply to show you how many amps it's taking that I then zoom in. So as you can see, we are using 2.6 amps now, which means it's charging a battery, which it was unable to do before, which means that that transistor died. Now, how did this transistor die? I don't know. It's a MacBook. There are many reasons for things to die inside of a MacBook. If you, I mean, let's face it, if you were a component that were existing inside of a MacBook, you probably wouldn't want to exist for very long as well either. That's that. So that is a machine that was uh, not charging. We checked the, car the two things that typically cause it. There's actually three things. The first is lack of battery recognition. This was able to recognize the battery, and I could ascertain that because it would run off of a battery, but that was charged. It could totally run off a battery that was charged. And also, PP bus G3 hot over here was 8.55 volts, not 8.15 volts. It's usually 8.15 volts when this data line over here between the charger and the battery is bad and it's not able to speak to it. But it was 8.5 volts, which it is when that data line is working. So the, this is the battery connector over here. That was just fine. I checked the current sensing issue, which I've discussed in many, many videos other than this, and I've explained how to measure it in many other videos, and that was measuring just fine. It wasn't measuring fine in the beginning, but that was because of Linux. And now it, you know, it's measuring right because you know I, I, I showed Linux. I punched it, and after I punched it, not only did my, my board measurements start to make sense, but the screen stopped flickering. And the le only thing that that left at that point was Q7155. So I replaced it, and now it charges the battery. And uh, that's about it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. This is. It's been a while since I've done one of these. As I've said, I used to have a lot more fun doing these than I do. I don't really find them to be as fun anymore. But every now and then, I'll get around to, to doing a board repair stream. So that's it for today. And as always, I hope that you learned something. I mean, you know what? I should make a new scene that just has the schematic. How about that? Schematic. Window capture. Add existing. Schematic, whole screen. Yeah. Why? I don't. Are you seeing the schematic or are you seeing some sort of blinking shit on the right? What do you guys see? I'm kind of curious. It's blinking. Oh. Fucking Linux! I don't know if that's Linux's fault or Paul. Paul Daniels! Alpha list. <laughs> Paul!